Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers traffic laws, private property, and criminal confinement, and was originally reported by the Times of Northwest Indiana, but was brought to our attention by Lackluster's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On June 12th, 2020, Amazon driver Deja Murphy drove down a half-mile driveway in Lowell, Indiana to deliver a package. Property owner Keith Miller, who believed that Ms. Murphy was speeding, drove after her and used his truck to block the driveway, preventing her from leaving the property. Mr. Miller then approached Ms. Murphy's delivery vehicle, tried to open the door, and ordered her to exit and show him her driver's license. Ms. Murphy called 911 for assistance, and Officer John Marshall of the Lake County Sheriff's Department responded to the call. Good luck, buddy. No. Bottom line is, I need your ID. Sure. You're going to pull your truck in your driveway. Yep. I'm going to get her information, I'm going to do a report, and we're going to go about our day. I'm going to get my wallet from my office. Huh? I'm going to no, get... you're not. You're going to just give me your name and information. Oh, sure. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm, right not... Down. I don't okay. need... I'm not spending all day with no. this. This is ridiculous. I ask, and we have since put cameras up, I just said... What's your last name? Down. Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. Get in your truck, get in your driveway. Okay. Thank you. Contact Amazon. Thank you. I, Please pull forward. Can I do anything to Please pull Please pull forward. I can't Please. ask a question. We're done. I can't. You're blocking her. Would on my like, property. On my property, it, It's though. called criminal confinement. Okay. I'm so, just asking, can I fill out a police report? That's what I'm doing right now. Thank you. That was my pull only question. Now. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. If you have a problem... No, Call sir. Amazon. Nope. Pull honest, forward. I honestly have Pull been forward. There's right plenty now. of times, places <laughs> to call Amazon. And if they're speeding on the regular road, then we can do something. Private property, we can't do nothing about it. Officer Marshall claims that because Ms. Murphy was on private property at the time of her alleged speeding, he is not within his authority to take any action against her. Traffic laws such as speeding often cannot be enforced on private property because of their limited applicability. For example, sections 9-21-5-1 and 9-21-5-2 of the Indiana Code outline the state's speeding laws, stating that, quote, a person may not drive a vehicle on a highway at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions, and that, quote, a person may not drive a vehicle on a highway at a speed in excess of the maximum limits. According to Section 9-13-2-73 of the Indiana Code, the term highway refers to, quote, the entire width between the boundary lines of every publicly maintained way when any part of the way is open to the use of the public for purposes of vehicular travel in Indiana. When this description is compared to the definition of a driveway, found in Section 9-13-2-49 of the Indiana Code, which states that a driveway is, quote, a way or place in private ownership that is used for vehicular travel by the owner and those having express or implied permission from the owner, but not by other persons. It is clear that Mr. Miller's driveway is not considered a highway under Indiana law. And therefore, Ms. Murphy could not be charged with speeding for traveling quickly on the driveway. However, there are some situations where police officers in Indiana can enforce traffic regulations on, quote, privately owned real property on which the public is invited to travel for business or residential purposes, as explained in Section 9-21-18-1 of the Indiana Code. Under Sections 9-21-18-3 and 9-21 1-18-4, a county, city, or town, and the owner or lessee of a shopping center or private business property can enter into a contract that empowers the police to regulate traffic and parking at the shopping center or private business property in accordance with local ordinances. This process does not allow police officers to enforce the state traffic laws on private property, but it does give them the authority to enforce specific local ordinances directed at the regulation of traffic and parking in these locations. Section 9 21-1-2 of the Indiana Code also includes a similar provision, allowing local authorities to adopt by ordinance additional traffic regulations with respect to a private road within its jurisdiction upon the property owner's request. The ordinance cannot conflict with state law and must require a contractual agreement between the local authority and property owner of the private road, setting forth the terms and responsibilities of the additional traffic regulations to be filed at the county recorder's office. As none of these situations apply to Mr. Miller's driveway, 
Monday, Officer Marshall could not take any actions to address Miss Murphy's alleged speeding because there is no applicable law regulating the speed of vehicles using Mr. Miller's driveway. Put speed bumps up. Call Amazon. Thank you. Sorry. Pull forward. Okay, ma'am. Okay. I need your license. Okay. And may I ask why you need my license, sir? Because you called the police. He called okay. the police. And sure. I'm called here. That's why I need your information. That's all the information I need. And he's upset because you were speeding. I told him he couldn't do what he's doing. And you're going to go on your way. And if you have any issues, you and your company and stop delivering here. Okay. How's that? And also, if he came to my door, that's what bothered me. He came to my door, opened me, opened the door, told me to get okay. the hell out my door. Out the car. Okay. That's exactly what he told me. Okay. No excuse for what he's doing, and I'm upset with him, not you. Okay, just making sure. No, I'm not upset with I'm you. Like, I didn't do anything. Uh -huh. I even asked him, can you Ma'am, I'm not upset with you whatsoever. I'm upset with him, because what he's doing is, I, I can't explain it. I do want, because that, that's harassing. You know what? Let's stop. Okay. We're going to do a report, and we're going to go about our day. It's harassment, though. Everything's everything. You know what? That's harassment. There'll be a report on file. Although Ms. Murphy tells Officer Marshall that she would like to press charges against Mr. Miller for harassment, Mr. Miller's conduct would not be considered harassment under Indiana law. According to Section 35-45-2-2 of the Indiana Code, the crime of harassment occurs when, quote, a person who, with intent to harass, annoy, or alarm another person, but with no intent of legitimate communication, makes a telephone call, whether or not a conversation ensues, communicates with a person by telegraph, mail, or other form of written communication, transmits an obscene message or indecent or profane words on a citizen's radio service channel, or uses a computer network or other form of electronic communication to communicate with a person, or transmit an obscene message or indecent or profane words to a person. Because, under this definition, harassment cannot occur in person, Mr. Miller could not be convicted of harassing Ms. Murphy. However, his conduct could result in convictions for several other crimes, including, as Officer Marshall suggested earlier to Mr. Miller, criminal confinement. Under Section 35-42-3-3 of the Indiana Code, quote, a person who knowingly or intentionally confines another person without the other person's consent commits criminal confinement. And under section 35-42-3-1, the term confine means to, quote, substantially interfere with the liberty of a person. Given this definition, the statute is broad in scope and courts have concluded that preventing an individual from leaving a location can constitute criminal confinement. For example, in the 2017 case of Hall v. State, the Indiana Court of Appeals upheld a criminal confinement conviction against an individual who closed the front door of a home, placed his foot in front of it, blocked the victim's departure from the back door by standing in front of it, and told her that she was not free to leave. Similarly, in the 2013 case of Sheehy v. Cohen, the Northern District of Indiana determined that a victim's allegations that several defendants blocked the door and prevented her from leaving a store despite her request to be allowed to leave were sufficient to assert a claim for criminal confinement. In addition to criminal confinement, Mr. Miller could also potentially be convicted of the crime of intimidation, which according to Section 35-45-2-1 of the Indiana Code, occurs when an individual communicates a threat with one of several wrongful intentions, including that another person be placed in fear of retaliation for a prior lawful act or of causing a vehicle to be evacuated. The statute defines the term threat as an expression by words or action of an intention to, among other things, unlawfully injure the person threatened or another person, or damage property, unlawfully subject a person to physical confinement or restraint, or cause the evacuation of a dwelling, a building, another structure, or a vehicle. While the state would need to further investigate the specific facts of the case to determine which type of intimidation potentially occurred in this situation, it is possible that a judge or jury could find Mr. Miller guilty of intimidation if they believed his words and actions constituted a threat. They'll go through the prosecutor's office. What's the, what's the, um, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the Lake County? Yes, we'll give you a case number. 
It'll be on the report, sir. What's your name? It'll be on the report. It's Marshall. Marshall? Okay. And tell your friend on the phone. That's I'm not upset friend. with that's you. My, that's my brother. That's oh, my brother. You know what? You know what? Everything's going on. That's the only reason why I'm Everyone's here. fine. We're here. I don't need your brother telling me my job and what we need to do. I think you need to get a hold of your supervisor and tell him. Oh, what. no. We already, I already talked to okay. you on the phone when, when I was, when all of this happened. Get a hold of your supervisor. What's, what's the phone number you can reach that? 219-779. She was speeding down his road. So it gives him the right to whatever. That's, no, it doesn't give him the right to do that. I'm going to give you a case number. He's an idiot. Blocking her in, acting silly because she's speeding. <laughs> Call Amazon. Let me get his plate number off his truck. I still got to give somebody my camera. All right, ma'am. There's the case number. Go ahead and report will be on file. And go around our squad cars and go on out. Okay. okay. Have a good day. Report's on file. I'm going to try and get in touch with Amazon. And well, hopefully there's no charges for you doing what you did, because she wants to press charges. I'm okay with that. Well, that's fine. You know. We'll be the detective bureau. In the future, don't do it, because we're racing all the way over here. I did over tell this. it wasn't an emergency. It is an emergency. When you're barricading someone from doing what they need to do or leaving, how about I barricade you? You'd be pretty upset. <laughs> If I told you you couldn't I, go somewhere and I wasn't a cop, and I barricaded you if in a... I knew I did wrong? If, if you drove somewhere silly and did something silly, and I barricade you in and tell you you can't leave, whether it's at Walmart, supermarket, wherever, private drive, you'd be pretty hot. Even if you did wrong. You don't do that. If you wanted to call and make a complaint to us, pull in your driveway, call. We'll make a complaint. But you don't do, want I ju do I just need to call you and give you a plate number? No, the plate number, it's on private property, for one. If you want to call and complain about it. That's what I'm asking. How would I do it the right way? Basically, it's private property. Okay. I can't enforce the speed. Okay. Okay? On your property. We can't. Reckless endangerment. None of it matters. It's on my driveway. Bodily. Officer Marshall explains again that he cannot enforce speeding laws on private property, and Mr. Miller asks whether the police could respond if Ms. Murphy was committing reckless endangerment. Under Section 35-42-2-2 of the Indiana Code, quote, A person who recklessly, knowingly, or intentionally performs an act that creates a substantial risk of bodily injury to another person commits criminal recklessness. Based on this definition, it is highly unlikely that simply driving fast on a driveway would be considered criminal recklessness. However, in the event that someone committed criminal recklessness or another criminal offense on private property, the police generally would be within their authority to enforce the law and arrest the offender because, unlike traffic regulations, criminal offenses are illegal regardless of whether they occur on private or public property, unless a specific location is an element of the crime. For example, Section 35-43-2-1.5 of the Indiana Code defines the offense of residential residential entry, which occurs when an individual, quote, knowingly or intentionally breaks and enters the dwelling of another person. Therefore, residential entry cannot be committed on public property because, by definition, it must occur in someone's home, whereas other offenses are considered to be criminal no matter where they take place. States are empowered to issue criminal regulations that apply anywhere within their borders under what is known as their general police power. In the 1954 case of Berman v. Parker, the Supreme Court Court explained the police power as including, quote, all the legislative powers which a state may exercise over its affairs. 
such as the ability to pass laws to protect the interests of public safety, public health, morality, peace and quiet, and law and order. This police power allows states to regulate how private property is used, as the Supreme Court explained in the 1980 case of Prune Yard Shopping Center versus Robbins, where it stated that, quote, it is well established that a state in the exercise of its police power may adopt reasonable restrictions on private property. And in the 1926 case of Euclid versus Ambler Co., which reasoned that, quote, in every ordered society, the state must act as umpire to the extent of preventing one man from so using his property or rights as to prevent others from making a correspondingly full and free use of their property and rights. Accordingly, the so-called police power is an inherent right on the part of the public umpire to prevent misuses of property or rights which impair the health, safety, or morals of others, or affect prejudicially the general public welfare. Therefore, although Indiana speeding laws do not apply to private driveways, if Ms. Murphy had violated any of the state's criminal laws, the police could enforce them, even on private property. It's on your driveway, it's private property. Okay. If she hits you, mm -hmm. that's one thing. I'm off, to, I'm off the county road, though. So. It doesn't matter. It's still okay. an accident on private property. We still have to handle it. So quit trying to go around everything I'm trying to tell you with different scenarios. One way or another, it's... We just keep asking these people to slow down. Well, slow they're down. not. It, so then you better figure out something else if you want them to slow down. Because it's your property. You're the one with a half mile long driveway. And two of us are racing here, speeding. So we can take care of business over this. Okay. When you have Amazon, you can call or you could call and complain to us. And we could possibly follow through with Amazon. But at the end of the day, it is private property. There okay. is plenty of numbers for Amazon, clearly. Yeah. Once he finished speaking with both Ms. Murphy and Mr. Miller, Officer Marshall left without making any arrests or issuing any citations. After the incident, Ms. Murphy retained an attorney and submitted a letter demanding that the Lake County prosecutors charge Mr. Miller criminally. On August 4th, 2020, Mr. Miller was charged in the Lake County Superior Court with criminal confinement where a vehicle is used, basic criminal confinement, and intimidation. As of the date of this episode, the charges are still pending and the case is scheduled for a jury trial on January 24th, 2020. 2022. Ms. Murphy and her attorney have also claimed that Officer Marshall should have arrested Mr. Miller immediately. However, according to Lake County Sheriff's Department attorney John Kopak, an internal investigation was conducted and it was determined that Officer Marshall did not engage in misconduct. It is unclear whether Ms. Murphy intends to pursue further legal action against Officer Marshall, the department, or Mr. Miller. Overall, Officer Marshall gets a C, because although he remained within the bounds of his authority throughout the interaction, he blatantly down played the gravity of Ms. Murphy's claims, refused to arrest Mr. Miller despite having clear evidence of his commission of a crime, and maintained a relatively hostile and confrontational attitude with everyone involved in the encounter. Within minutes of Officer Marshall arriving on the scene, he concluded that there was enough evidence to arrest Mr. Miller for the charge of criminal confinement, but instead of carrying out his lawful duty, he elected to give Mr. Miller a stern talking to, rather than placing him under arrest. While officers are granted a considerable degree of discretion, in regards to making an arrest, his refusal to arrest Mr. Miller after Ms. Murphy made it abundantly clear that she would like to press charges was nothing short of unprofessional. It is unclear why Officer Marshall did not arrest Mr. Miller on the scene, and it is difficult to discern his reasoning when his logic stemmed from anecdotal euphemisms like, everything is everything, and I can't explain it. Now, ultimately, Mr. Miller was arrested, but Officer Marshall's refusal to carry out his duty on the scene led to Ms. Murphy being forced to hire an attorney to ensure that justice was served. Citizens should never be forced to hire a legal representative because a member of law enforcement neglects to take lawful action, especially when the evidence of the alleged crime was personally witnessed by the responding officer. Mr. Miller gets an F for failing to contact the proper authorities before taking action against Ms. Murphy, detaining Ms. Murphy without the lawful authority to do so, and for wasting the city's time and resources to resolve an issue that was largely civil in nature. Mr. Miller mentioned multiple times 
times that he has had ongoing issues with drivers speeding down his private roadway, which means that he has had multiple opportunities to address the issue without resorting to illegally detaining the alleged speeders. As Officer Marshall suggested, Mr. Miller could have placed speed bumps along his driveway, contacted the company in question to make proper delivery arrangements, or simply asked Miss Murphy to slow down when she made deliveries to his home. But instead, he chose to take the law into his own hands and likely committed multiple crimes in the process. As a private property owner, it was Mr. Miller's duty to make all the necessary arrangements to ensure that whoever was entering his property did so in the manner that he deemed appropriate. And he could have worked directly with the Lake County Sheriff's Department to establish an enforceable speed limit on his road if he felt that speeding was such an issue on his property. This encounter could have been avoided entirely if Mr. Miller had carried out his due diligence as a property owner. And this interaction highlights the notion that owning property does not grant citizens the unfettered right to police that property with reckless abandon. Ms. Murphy gets an A+, for remaining calm and collected despite being unlawfully detained by Mr. Miller, immediately calling 911 for help instead of resorting to physical resistance or violence, and for following up this encounter with the proper legal action. It is clear from the video that Ms. Murphy had a legitimate criminal complaint against Mr. Miller, and despite Officer Marshall's condescending attitude, she managed to keep her emotions in check and do what was necessary to temporarily resolve the issue. As mentioned on many episodes of ATA, attempting to carry out justice on the street rarely ever produces significant results, and Ms. Murphy did a fantastic job of reserving her grievances for the proper venue. It was relatively evident that Officer Marshall had no intentions of arresting Mr. Miller, but that did not deter Ms. Murphy from acknowledging that Mr. Miller's conduct was unlawful and taking the appropriate action against him and Officer Marshall. I commend Ms. Murphy for remaining calm despite being undermined and dismissed by Officer Marshall, and for taking it upon herself to ensure that Mr. Miller answered for his actions. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.